Greeting guys, uh, our lecture today will be on uh, undetermined coefficients. As mentioned earlier, this is one of the two methods of solving non-homogeneous constant coefficient differential equations of higher order. Um, just the concept so you could see the theory of what happens and what happens to the solutions when you find them. When you have a non-homogeneous differential equation, and I'm going to use the general notation I shared with you guys earlier this semester, where I said you could write a general differential equation as an L of Y. So assuming that L of Y is some higher order differential equation with constant coefficients, and it's equal to F of X, which is it's equal to some forcing function, which makes the differential equation non-homogeneous. Now, how are we going to go about doing this? And remember, the objective is to find a general solution. The idea is for non-homogeneous differential equations that you first solve the homogeneous case and from here you find a solution y sub h known for homogeneous. You then assume that your differential equation is non-homogeneous and then we will teach you to solve this non-homogeneous portion of it. And the solution you find from here will be called y sub p, which they call it particular solution. And then using the superposition principle, your general solution will become your homogeneous solution plus your particular solution. And this will be your uh, complete solution or general solution for the differential equation, for the non-homogeneous differential equation. Now we've looked at uh, the characteristic equation and we all are comfortable, I assume, at this point solving the homogeneous part of the differential equation and the uh, non-homogeneous part will solve it using the method of undetermined coefficients, which I'm about to tell you now. Now, the way it turns out is that once you find your uh, <clears throat> homogeneous solution and you find your fundamental solutions, then based on some so-called guessing method, which is what undetermined coefficients are, so you kind of guess on the solu of the particular solution that it's going to be based on the shape or the form of the forcing function. And then you take appropriate derivatives of that guess and you plug them into the differential equation and go from there. Now, what kind of a guesses can we make? Well, of course, these are not just random guesses. They're based on what type of a forcing function we have. So um, um, I want to try to uh, show you guys there's a, there's a table in um, the PowerPoint. I can give you the slide. It will be slide number 50 on module two lecture notes, where you have a table of particular solutions and uh, you could look at it. Again, it's slide number 49, uh, actually slide number 50 on the module two lecture notes, where it says if you're constant, if your forcing function f of x happens to be a 1, then your particular solution you're going to be guess at, guessing at will just be, just be a constant a. If your uh, forcing function happens to be a linear function like 5x plus 7, then you'll be guessing at your particular solution using an ax plus b, like the general version of a linear equation. Obviously, if your f of x was uh, 3x squared plus 8x minus 5, then your particular solution, the guess, would have been ax squared plus bx plus c. And notice all you have to do at this point is to find a, b, and c, and then you will have your particular solution. If your function happens to be a sinusoid, a sine of x or a cosine of x, and I don't even need to say x, I could, let me make it even more interesting and I'll make it cosine of 7x. So if your forcing function is a sine or a cosine, then your guess for the particular solution will be a linear combination of sine and cosines using the same argument with different coefficients. So in general, you'll write this as a cosine of 7x plus b sine of 7x. And it will be the same thing if you had a cosine of 7x as a, as a forcing function. What if I have an exponential? If I have f of x is equal to e to the 5x, then my particular solution for that will just be a generalized e to the 5x, which is a e to the 5x. And again, all you have to do to pin your particular solution is to find that constant. What if you have a combination of, say, x squared e to the 5x? Well, here you have a uh, quadratic function multiplied to an exponential. 
So for my particular solution, I write the general quadratic equation and I'll multiply it to e to the 5x. And again, there are more specific cases where you could look at, again, on slide 50 on module two lecture notes, and you could see the rest of the guesses that you can make for different types of uh, given forcing function. I'm going to actually solve a pro problem with you guys so we could actually see how it all unfolds. Um, I'm gonna take an example from the PowerPoint. I'm gonna look at y double prime minus two y prime minus three y, and that's equal to four x minus five plus six x e to the two x. So I have a second order, constant coefficient differential equation, uh, non-homogeneous, and my forcing function happens to be a combination of a linear function and a product of a linear function and an exponential. So let's see how this is gonna play out. I'm gonna start trying to find the homogeneous solution first, so I will have to write the characteristic equation for the homogeneous version of this given differential equation. So I'll be solving y double prime minus two y prime minus three y equal to zero. For this, my characteristic equation will be m squared minus two m minus three equal to zero. If I factor this polynomial, oops, palm rejection there. If I factor this polynomial, I'll get 3, 1, minus, and plus. So my two solutions are going to be negative 1 and 3. So based on the roots of my characteristic equation, given that they're distinct and real, I can simply write my homogeneous solution to be uh, c1 uh, e to the negative x plus c2 e to the 3x. So this is my particular uh, homogeneous solution. Now I need to find the particular solution. Well, let's look at our forcing function here. And let's see if I can come up with some kind of a guess as to what the particular solution should be for such a forcing function. Well, from the, uh, the, the linear part of the function, 4x minus 5, I write the general linear equation, which is ax plus b. So that will cover my 4x minus 5. Plus, then I have a 6x, which is, again, a linear function. So for that, I have to write, again, the general linear function, but I can use a and b, so I'll use cx plus e. And then I just multiplied that by my exponential, which is e to the 2x. So this seems to be the appropriate particular solution guess I need to come up with for such a forcing function. Now, of course, you have to remember, and we'll talk about this in, in examples in the future, that if one of the guesses that you come up with for your particular solution happens to be matching one of your fundamental solutions in the homogeneous case, so in other words, if one of these two exponentials happened to have been a 2x, e to the 2x, you couldn't have used this e to the 2x as a guess. You'd have to shy away from that. That's the only glitch in the system. So, and I'll do an example so you could actually see what we're talking about. But for now, let's just go ahead and do this. There are no glitches here though, because the uh, guess that you've come up with for your particular solution doesn't seem to be the same as any of the fundamental solutions. That's the most important thing. You cannot take a guess of a function that is identical to one of your fundamental solutions of the homogeneous part. So remember that. Now, obviously at this point, I have to take the uh, derivative of my particular solution and then plug them into the uh, differential equation that were given initially. So I need to find y prime, y particular prime, and y particular double prime. I'm going to just write these, so y particular prime will be a plus e to the 2x quantity c plus 2e plus 2cx. And my y, y particular double prime will be 4 e to the 2x times quantity c plus e plus uh, cx. 
if you uh, take the derivative of the particular solution and simplify it and clean it up, that's what you should end up with. Now, if I take these and I uh, substitute them all into my differential equation, I will end up with the following equation and you could verify this. I'm going to skip the algebra and just write the final version once you plug in your y double prime, y prime and y itself back into the differential equation. We'll end up with a quantity of negative 3b minus 2a minus 3ax plus e to the 2x quantity 2c minus 3e minus 3cx and all that equal to your forcing function which is 4x minus 5 plus 6x e to the 2x. Now the objective guys, as you can see here, the objective is to take the left hand side, clean it up, and then equate coefficients with the right hand side so I could find out my a, b, c, and d, and e. If I equate coefficients at this point, my constant is negative five, and a constant on the left hand side is negative three b, negative two a. So basically are going, you're going to end up with a system of equations. So negative three b, negative two a, must equal minus 5. So I could show you that. I'm going to use a green color and we'll say this part translates to that part. So that's how you're equating coefficients. Now, carrying on, the next one will be the coefficient of x, which is negative 3a, and the coefficient of x on the right hand side is 4. So my other equation will be negative 3a equals 4. Then you have uh, the coefficient of e to the 2x on the left-hand side, which is uh, 2c minus 3e minus 3cx, and the coefficient uh, of uh, e to the 2x on the other side is 6x, which obviously tells us that from the right side, the 2c minus 3e part the 2c minus 3e part, that must be 0 because there's no constant next to 6x next to e to the 2x. And the negative 3c, which is the coefficient of x, must be equal to the coefficient of x on the, on the right side, which is 6. So I have uh, the following system of equations. And if you guys solve this, you'll end up with a is equal to negative 4 over 3. Again, I'm skipping the algebra. Your b will be 23 over 6. Your C will be negative 2, and your E will be 4 thirds. So my particular solution will be, if you look at the guess that you've made, I'm going to make it smaller so it fits in the window. So look at your particular solution here, guys. So it's AX, A is negative 4 thirds, so negative 4 third X plus b, so plus 23 over 6, uh, plus parentheses negative 2x plus 4 third times e to the 2x. So that becomes my particular solution. So now I'm ready to write my general solution. So my general solution, given that it's the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution, will be my homogeneous solution, which is c1 e to the 3x, plus c2 e to the minus x plus the particular solution which starts with the minus so minus 4 thirds x plus 23 over 6 now you can say minus uh, and then you can factor it out and say 2x minus 4 third e to the 2x and that becomes my general solution you guys have some more exercises for undetermined coefficients for you guys to work with. So do some practices and we will see you on the next lecture.